Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite YouTuber who's just really easy to agree with, Gardner. I want to thank everybody on Patreon who continues to support the show. Uh, you guys make what I do possible. I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for your support. And I want to give a special shout out to Webfreak. Webfreak, my dude, your support is truly appreciated. If you believe in the work I do, you can hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can hit that subscribe button if you feel so inclined. But if you don't like YouTube very much, you can head over to the library, lbry.tv slash at the Linux Gamer. All my videos are over there. They get published around the same time. And uh, I really like LBRY. Come on. Library's awesome. So, uh, Firefox, huh? There's been a lot of people talking about Firefox recently. And uh, people have been giving Firefox some crap. I don't understand why. Firefox is a great web browser. I love Firefox. And people might be talking more about Mozilla, but you know what? Firefox is awesome, and the work that Mozilla does is great. Uh, so I wanted to talk about it. Here are 10 reasons that I love Firefox. And before anyone accuses me of being a shill, and I, I know that there will be people, because there are some real tinfoil hat wearing guys out there. Uh, look, I came up with this idea to do this video in the shower today, uh, this morning. Nobody from Mozilla has talked to me about this. They're not paying me to make this video. I'm just doing it because I love Firefox. With that being said, let's get to it. Number 10, Firefox is its own thing. And you might be asking, well, what the heck does that mean? Let's talk about it. First of all, uh, let's introduce some of the competitors to Firefox. There's Chrome, there's Chromium, there's WebKit, and then there's Chromium, 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 and introducing the latest, Chromium. Uh, <laughs> Firefox, by comparison, is its own thing. Now, if you're not familiar with how this all started, back in the day, you might have known uh, Netscape. You remember the, the good web browser from the 90s? After the whole antitrust thing against Microsoft, Netscape actually transformed itself into the nonprofit Mozilla Foundation, and shortly thereafter, they introduced Firefox. Firefox, unlike just about every other web browser out there, is its own thing. It's a unique implementation of, of the web standards that we know and use every single day. And that's one of the reasons that I love it so much is because where Safari and Chrome and uh, Opera and Edge, Microsoft Edge, all of these things are based on two different projects, Firefox is its own thing. And I really appreciate that. Number nine, their branding is great. <laughs> now, I'm somewhat of a serious geek when it comes to branding, and I believe that Firefox has a pretty cogent brand. If it's the design language, if it's the admittedly flamboyant color use, the naming scheme of the rest of the products in the Firefox family, um, even just the execution of the brand itself, uh, Firefox is just Oh, it's on point. I love Firefox's design. And I think other open source projects should really look to Firefox as a masterclass of what it means to have a brand, establish it, stick with it, and just be awesome in terms of branding. Firefox shows that you really can be an open source project and still look great doing it. Number eight, a sensible release cadence. HTML, CSS, the web itself is a living standard. That means that there are new things that happen all the time in the standard, new features that need to be added to HTML, new changes to CSS. There are new APIs and protocols that need to be tweaked. And uh, for all of that, Firefox stays on top. In the last six months, there have been six major releases of Firefox. And if you count point releases, there have been 21 total updates to Firefox in the last six months. That's impressive, especially for a company the size of Mozilla. If it's web APIs, if it's DOM elements, if it's new things like web components or, or web workers, Firefox is always on top of integrating the latest changes and shipping them as features. And for that, they get tremendous kudos. Number seven, Mozilla has a much better track record for user rights and privacy. Sure, Mozilla's not perfect, and I know that there are going to be some contrarians in the audience who uh, who bring up the whole uh, Mr. Robot integration that, admittedly, was a huge mistake, and I fully, I was mad at Mozilla for that. I don't know how that got past legal, I don't know how that got past the people who actually had to make the, uh, the, the browser test or whatever it was. Anyway... That was a huge mistake. But besides a few hiccups here and there, I mean, you can really tell that Mozilla, unlike some of the competitors, really do care about user privacy and user freedom. Just look at features that they've shipped in the last six months for Firefox. Uh, the new enhanced tracking protection that, pr that blocks browser fingerprints and it blocks uh, tracking cookies. All these things are awesome and I think Mozilla is doing a great job. Suffice it to say, 
Mozilla's not perfect, but I would trust Mozilla more than any other player in the tech industry any day of the week, and twice on Sunday. Number six, Firefox for Android actually has browser extensions. Enough said. <laughs> Number five, the Firefox ecosystem is coming along nicely. Whether it's the uh, password manager or data breach protection that Firefox now has natively, or if it's the VPN or the file sharing service they launched, Mozilla really does have a growing ecosystem of apps and services that you can rely on. I think some of the appeal and some of the usefulness of, of some of these services might not be readily apparent. Uh, like for some people, they don't understand why they might want a VPN. But for, for what it's worth, I think that it's excellent that Firefox comes with an actual good password manager that you can access on your Android device. If I didn't have my own hosted solution for a password manager, I would definitely be using Firefox Lockwise. Number four, new and useful features are added all the time to Firefox. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about number eight? You just talked about that. That's talking about like the upgrades to the web parts of Firefox, where I'm talking about like new features added to the browser itself that aren't necessarily part of like the web standard. I'm talking about major features for your web browser. Like for example, crypto mining and fingerprint protection, which launched in uh, Firefox 68, uh, dark mode improvements for the reader mode, which is awesome, improved rendering performance, the enhanced tracking protection feature, updated password manager using Firefox Lockwise, and a global zoom preference, which, I mean, they've always had like zooming for uh, like individual like websites and the browser will remember what you what your zoom level was at depending on what site you're on but you, now you can set like an actual global zoom and so every site you visit will be zoomed to that amount i think that's really awesome actually i don't know why they didn't have it before number three it's actually free and open source yeah 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 chromium chromium's open source too whatever whatever firefox actually feels open source though there's some ineffable quality to an actual open source project that just feels open, right? Like that's one of the things about um, Chromium that I feel is lacking. Uh, Chrome doesn't feel open to me. Despite the number of forks that are available, um, it's just, it doesn't feel open. Maybe it's because I'm prejudiced against the MIT license, which is primarily what Chromium is uh, licensed under. But I, I really think that like MIT is only good for certain things like uh, shared libraries. It shouldn't be for user facing applications in my opinion. And open source is not just about having the code available, right? Open source is about like having a community and having the, the core development team open and willing to accept changes submitted by the community. And I've heard some people talk about uh, Chromium's development environment not being super welcoming. And this is like fully third hand account. This is just what I've heard. Maybe it's a wonderful place. I don't know. I just don't feel like Chrome is is an open thing. It doesn't feel open to me. And I, that's one of the reasons that I love Firefox is because it does. Now, what does, uh, what does what does feeling mean? I know for a lot of people, it's gonna be hard for you to wrap your head around, but there's an ineffable quality. Ineffable means un unlanguageable. You can't say it. It's just a feeling you get. And it's a feeling I get when I have Firefox open. And I, I, I need that feeling in my software. Number two, the developer tools. Yes, the developer tools in Firefox are the superior developer tools in my opinion. The thing that I like the most about Firefox is its developer tools. It is so good. As a web developer, Firefox's inspector tool, its JavaScript debugging, its, able, uh, its ability to edit CSS on the fly, all of those things just work the way I expect them to. Um, Chromium just doesn't feel the same to me. One of my most desired features was recently added. The ability to look through WebSocket frames uh, in the network inspection tab. Ooh, I am so excited to get my hands on that. And that just dropped, I think, in Firefox um, 73. So that's actually really exciting. And I know, I understand Chrome has a WebSocket inspector, but you're forgetting two crucial things. Number one, uh, I don't care because number two, Chrome sucks. And finally, you might have thought that my number one would be the inspector tools because, uh, you know, I said it's my favorite thing about it. The thing that I like the most about Firefox is its developer tools. 
But really, my favorite thing about, <laughs> about uh, Firefox is that it's not a Google technology. Google are not your friends. They are an advertising company with a business model predicated on surveillance capitalism. They make money by exploiting your apathy to privacy and vacuuming up as much information about you as they can. Google owns Chrome, and that is an, a native app that is running on your machine. They can pretty much do whatever they want on your computer. And uh, they are seeing everything you're doing online with their browser. Uh, if that's not a reason to not use Chrome, uh, I don't know what is. On the flip side, like I mentioned before, Firefox is actively fighting these kinds of things. Uh, the, from the enhanced tracking protection to uh, to mitigating crypto mining or putting a stop to browser fingerprints, uh, blocking third-party tracking technologies, and providing apps and services that actually help the user maintain their privacy on the web. I'm sorry, but Firefox is the king of privacy on the web. It's the only browser I like. It's the best one on the market as far as I'm concerned. It's fast, it's secure, and I love it. <laughs> so those are my top 10 reasons why I love Firefox. I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think Firefox is a great browser? Um, or are you one of those guys with a tinfoil hat that doesn't trust Mozilla as far as you can metaphorically throw it? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys have to say. Um, I want to give special shout outs to some of my latest patrons over on Patreon. Uh, if you believe in the work I do, you can help support the show and get your name read here on the show. I want to say thank you to Sir Ninny with a two L's or three L's at the end. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, my friend. Sean Borman, uh, 40 Dublo. To blow. I hope I said that right. David Love, Admin Dev, Tunnel Graham, Sheldon Halcom, and Ken Duffy. My friends, thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. My DMs on Patreon are open. Please send me a message if you have any suggestions, if you have anything you want to say, or if you just want to say hi. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution on Patreon. There's a link in the description. You can also pick up a t-shirt. That'll help the show out as well. Uh, but no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, and I'll see you guys next time. Love you.